the first book of Vesuvius of Caesarea on the Divine Manifestation. Those who say, on the constitution of the whole of this great and beautiful world, and on the diversified subsistence and manifold structure of the heavens and the earth, that it has neither beginning nor governor, and that there is no Lord and no providential care existing, but that it has arisen of itself, casually, undesignedly, and by dumb luck, however this may have happened, are altogether impious and godless. The company, too, of the polytheists, on the other hand, set in order against the preceding, seem to me to be an extreme error, that they err as children in intellect, who change the worship of the maker of the world, the governor of all, the God who is over all, for that all the things which are of him, and hence honor the sun, moon, and the rest of all the parts of the universe, primary elements, the earth, water, air, and fire, with the name due to him who is their maker and creator, and call those gods which never existed, nor had existed, nor had so been named, had not the maker of the universe, the word of God, willed that they should exist. Nor do they appear to me better than those who leave the chief architect to admire the excellency of the worksmanship visible in the house of kings, the wrought ceilings and the walls, their many colored and flowered pictures, their roofs variegated with the gold and sculpture of precious stones, and attribute to these the praise and wisdom due to their artificer, which they ought to ascribe not to the things seen, but to him alone who is their chief architect, to confess him to be the cause of their wonder and of these many works of wisdom. For he alone is wise who supplied the cause, that these many things should thus be. These differ therefore in no respect from mere infants, nor do those whose admiration is expended on the lyre with its seven strings the mere instrument of music, but not on him who is the inventor of its structure, nor on him who knows its use, nor yet on his wisdom, nor again do those who leave him who is eminent in war to adorn his spear and shields with crowns of victory, nor do those who honor the streets, squares, and buildings, temples, gymnasia, things inanimate, with the admiration due to the great king who caused the erection of such chief city of his kingdom, when it was right, they should admire neither the pillars nor the stones, but the great maker and lawgiver of these instances of wisdom. In conformity with these considerations also, we make this same being the efficient cause of all which we see with the eyes of the body, not the sun, the moon, nor any other of the things in the heavens. It is becoming too that we should confess them all to be the works of wisdom, but not that we should honor or worship them, by means of any similitude of him who is their maker and creator, from the contemplation of these two, we both praise and worship with the whole affection of the soul, him, I say, who is the king of all, the word of God. For no one has ever graced the mere body of any wise and intelligent man, or his eyes, head, hands, or feet, or the rest of his flesh, much less his external clothing, with the title of wisdom, nor yet has termed the vessels in the house, nor the service vessels of the philosophers wise, while every thinking person has expressed his wonder at that concealed and unseen mind which is in man. Thus, and more particularly, before these visible ornaments which are but the bodies of this whole universe, and which have been fabricated from one species of matter, let us express our wonder at that unseen and invisible word, that is, maker and adorner of all the exemplars of all things, who is the only begotten word of God, whom the maker of all, he is who is beyond all, and above all being, generated of himself as a ray of light from his own Godhead, and constituted him both the leader and governor of this whole world. For it was impossible that this perishable being of bodies and this nature of reasonable creatures, such as it now is, could be brought near to God, the governor of all, on account of its exceedingly great imperfection, for he is in essence beyond and above all, which can neither be described, comprehended, nor approached, and which dwells in the glorious light to which nothing can be compared, as to divine words declare, 
for this had no existence, and out of nothing did he send it forth, and hence it was greatly different, and very far removed from the nature of his essence. Well therefore did he, the fullness of all good, the God of all, first appoint a mediator, the divine power, his only begotten, who should be sufficient for all, who could accurately, abundantly, and as present, hold converse with his father, receive of his inward and secret nature, and be meekly lowered to the form and manner of those who were so far removed from his princely state, in no other way could it be either glorious or right that he, who is beyond and above all, should be mixed up with matter that is perishable and with a body. On this account, the divine word entered by a sort of co-mixture into this whole and bound together the bands, as it were, of all things by means of the divine power which is incorporeal, leading on and carrying forward and governing the whole by every species of wisdom as it seemed good to him. Proof, then, of this conclusion is obvious, for if those which we usually term the primary elements of all, the earth, water, air, and fire, were themselves the constituent portions of the universe, and are constitutive of mixed nature, which we can even see with our eyes is the case, and if the essence of all were one, and that comprehending the whole, as were the mother and nurse of all things, and those who are subtle in these matters love to term it, and were the, without figure and visibility, and wholly destitute of soul and of reason, whence one may ask was it that this world was made to consist of that which it now does, whence also the distinction of the several elements, and whence the concordant courses of those things which were adverse to agreement, and who commanded this heavy element of earth to ride over that of humid matter? And who is he that caused water, the nature of which is to run downward, to take an opposite course and to ascend to the clouds. And who is he that has so constrained the power of fire that it shall insinuate itself into the wood, and has made it to mix itself up with things that are in their natures opposed to it? And who has atempered this cold air with the power of heat, has released these from their natural contentions with one another, and has reconciled them, as it were, to love. Who is he that has distinguished the race subject to mortality with the character of extension, and drawn it out to the length of the life which is immortal? Who is he that has so formed the male, fashioned the female, and associated them both as one compound, and thus discovered one source of generation for all animal life? Who is he that changes this fluent, generating seed from its fluid, perishing and senseless state, and makes it that of a generation of animal life? Who is he that performs even to this time all these things, and innumerable others beyond them, in which exceed all wonder and astonishment, who is he that daily and hourly, secretly, and by a power that is invisible, affects the generation and changes of all these things? But the efficient cause of all things is justly said to be that worker of miracles, the word of God. For the word of God, who is almighty, has in truth extended himself into everything, above into the heights, and beneath into the depths, has he drawn out his incorporeal soul, he also holds, as it were, in his hands, the breadth and length of all in its extent. This whole has he brought and bound up together, and has thus set up for himself this immense vessel, filled with every sort of compound. He too, by every species of wisdom, and by means of the power which is rational, has made well to combine and to harmonize according to their several measures, and this essence of bodies destitute of reason, form, and visibility, governing by words unutterable, and directing for the advantage of all, the sun, the moon, and those other luminaries that are in the heavens. This selfsame word of God, too, brought himself down upon the earth, and there set up all various kinds of animals, and every beautiful form of plant. This selfsame word of God 
also emerged even into the depths of the sea and determined those swimming natures and here again he made the myriads of forms which are innumerable with every various kinds of living creature this self-same also completes by the effectuating art of nature those beings which are inwardly conceived in the womb and forms them into animals the same too makes to ascend to the heights as light this humid heavy and naturally descending matter of sea water and thus completing the course of his government changes it to sweetness and brings it again in due measure and at determined seasons upon the earth and like the excellent husbandman who waters his land well and attempers the wet with the dry he changes things into every sort of form at one time into beautiful flowers at another into the forms peculiar to each species, at another into a delightful sense, and another in different and diversified sorts of fruits, at another into every kind of taste which gives pleasure. But why need I take upon myself to discuss the powers of the word of God, or venture upon a thing, the doing of which is impossible, and it is clear, greatly surpasses all mortal mind? Others, indeed, name this same being universal nature, Others, the universal soul, others, fate, and others say that he is the God who is beyond all. But I know not how they confound together the things which are so greatly and widely different, and thus cast down to the earth and mix up that governor of all, that power of eternal existence which is above all, with bodies and with perishable matter, a form that he is the medium both of irrational and rational animals, and he is comprehended both in those that are mortal and immortal. But these things they do. The divine doctrine, however, declares that he who is above all that is good, the same is the efficient cause of all, and he is beyond all comprehension, and that on this account he cannot be described, enounced, or named, and not only that he is elevated above all verbal description, but also above all mental apprehension, that he is neither contained in place, nor existing in body, neither in the heavens, nor in the ether, nor in any one portion of this whole, but that he is at once within and independent of all, reserved in the unseen depth of his own knowledge. The divine declarations teach us to recognize him alone as the God of truth, who is far removed from all essence of body, and a stranger to all service of government, it has therefore been delivered to us that all is of him, but not that it is by or through him. But he, as a king, within the concealment and privacy in which he is incomprehensible, sits in the elevation of his own splendor, governing and ordering all solely by the power of his own will. For by his will exist whatsoever does exist, and had he not so willed, neither had it so existed. He wills, however, every good thing, because he is also good in his own essential being. He, therefore, by whom are all things, the word of God proceeded forth from above, from his good Father, as a river ever flowing from an unlimited fountain, and distilling as rain in words unutterable to those who were perishing, completely furnished for the common salvation of all. And, as in the case with ourselves, that secret and invisible mind which is within us, no man ever knew either how or why it exists in its own essential character, but which sits as a king within the secrecy of its chambers, and considers of the things to be done. So, the only word then proceeding from it, begotten as it were, of a father in the privacy of retirement, and being the primary angel or messenger to all, in the mind of its father, openly publishes those things which its father considered in secret, and passing on into the hearing of all, brings to full effect the will, so made known, these hearers then receive the benefit of the word, while the secret and invisible mind, this father of such word, no one had ever seen with the eyes, so also, that is, in a manner surpassing all examples in comparison, that completing word of God, the king of all, was, as being the only begotten son of his father, established, not by any mere emanating virtue, 
nor constituted in his nature by the enunciation of names and words, nor designated by any sound produced by the percussion of the air, but the word is living, and is the minister of God who is over all, and in his essence he is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He proceeds moreover from the Godhead and rule of his father, and is the good offspring of the good father, and the common savior of all. He also waters all, pouring out from his own fullness upon all, life and reason, and wisdom and light, and every good thing. He waters too, not only the things that are before him and near him, but also those that are removed far away on the earth and in the sea. And if there be any other creature and anything that exists, he too keeps in order by his justice and the power of his rule. Every border, place, law, and possession, to each and everything does he distribute and give that which is suitable, apportioning this to some who are in the sphere above the world, to others who reside in the heavens, to others whose habitations is aether, to others that are in the air, to others in the earth. Then passing on from these, he again well distinguishes in other quarters the lives of all, carrying forward with due discrimination their customs and various observances. He also provides the food for the animals, not only for those that are rational, but also for those that are not so, and this for the advantage of those that are. To some he gives the comfort of immortal and temporary life, to others that they may partake of immortality and of everything, as the word of God is he the doer. And being near to everything, and pervading all with a power which is rational, and looking up to his Father, he governs the things that are below according to his intimations, and after him accordingly as the Savior of all. And thus, mediating and bringing near to the eternal being this essence of things, he constitutes the bond which cannot be severed. The word of God, I say, which is in the midst of which binds together those which are diverse and suffers them not to fall off and away. He is the providential care which is watchful over all. He is the director of all. He is the power of God and the wisdom of God. He is the only begotten Son of God, the God which is begotten of God, the Word. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was was with God, and the Word was God. Everything was by Him, and without Him was not anything. The glorious words of the divine man so teaching. This is the common Savior of all, on which whose accounts this universal essence is productive and rejoices that it ever drinks from His dewdrops, is always youthful in its stature, and ever presents the appearance of beauty. He therefore holds its reins, and, at the intimations of his father, rightly guides the mighty ship of this universe. And with his own helm he governs it. This being excellent of art, that he who is God above all, as a good father beget as good fruit, the only begotten son, and give him to this world as a most excellent gift, did cast as a soul into a body destitute of soul and into the nature of irrational bodies, his own rational word, and so by their virtue, the divine word. Did he both enlighten and enliven this otherwise shapely, unsightly, and colorless being by him? I say, whom we ought both to know and to worship, as being ever near to the matter and elements of all bodies. Thus that which was immaterial, bodiless, and senseless became as from others, endued with sentience. But he is the life, and he is the light, the intelligent offspring of the light, which cannot be described. He too is one in essence, even as he is from one father. He possesses, however, many virtues within his own person. For we should not suppose that because the parts of the world are many, that they therefore constitute many powers, or demons, nor because the operations are many, we ought therefore to set ourselves up many gods. Those therefore who follow many gods commit as children and soul a grievous mistake when they make into gods the constituent parts of the universe, and virtually divide the one world into many. As if one should take from 
the person of a man, the eyes only, and then affirm that these were the man, and again that the ears were another, and so again the head of another, or should gradually sever the neck, the breast, the shoulders, the feet, the hands, or the rest of the members, or that he should so divide the faculty of sense by process of reasoning, then affirm on this one man that these portions really were many men. He would deserve nothing better of the wise than the ridicule due to folly. Such as this man would be, would he likewise be who fabricated for himself many gods out of the constituent parts of the one universe, and would sever into many sections those bodies of all whose nature is fleeting and dispersive, in which are fabricated out of the one primary material, and then again would by an effort of reason make these his gods? Much worse than would it be, who would also imagine that this entirely made world, constituted as it is holy and altogether of many parts, is God, not considering that the divine nature could never subsist of parts, or be complex, or could stand in need of some other to compound it, nor again that if it consisted of parts, could it be divine. For how can it consist of things different and dissimilar, faulty and excellent, because that which is compounded must also be dissoluble, and that which consists of many parts is of necessity dissimilar, while that which is equal in all and unchanging in all is simple and incomplex. That too which is complex is compounded of things dissimilar, and that which is dissimilar has in itself something faulty, opposed to that which is excellent, for if the whole were excellent it would then be equal and similar. And if it were so in the whole, it would in the whole be consistent with itself, and thus would it be in essence simple and without parts. But this nature of things does not show itself to be such, since this world is viewed as wholly subject to sense, for it is constituted of many parts, and is therefore compounded, and is too in many of its parts changing, and where it is thus there is also the capability of a nature of an opposite description, and hence this world associates beings at once both mortal and immortal, rational and irrational, in matter too, both cold and hot, wet and dry, from all which God is necessarily free. For if the nature of God be simple, it is also without parts and is uncompounded, placed, beyond, and far removed from every ordinance of this visible world. On this account, the preacher of truth thus openly says, The word of God proclaimed, He who is before all is alone the Savior of all rational beings. But God who is beyond all is the head source of all generation of the word. He alone is the cause of all. And of his only begotten word. He is truly styled the Father. Above him, therefore, no other cause can be assigned. He, therefore, is God alone, and from him proceedeth forth by virtue of his own secret will, which is unutterable, the only begotten, the Savior of all, the one word of God, who is through all. This sensible world is, therefore, not unlike the lyre of many strings, consisting of many dissimilar portions, of acute and grave, lax and intense, and of all others between these, all well combined together by the art of the musician, such then is also this universe, collected as it is, into one compound, consisting of many parts and many compositions, of cold at once and warm its opposite, and of matter wet and dry, it is moreover a mighty vessel and is the work of the God of all. But the divine word has not been constituted of parts, nor has it been compounded of any opposing nature, nor does it consist of either part or compound, but both wisely and well does he in everything resemble his father, and to the king of all does he give back the praise which to him is both suitable and due. And, as in one body there are many parts, members, viscera, and bowels collected together, and one invisible soul only is diffused through all, and one 
is the mind which consists of neither body nor parts, so also we say of this one world which is constituted of many parts, so also the word of God, manifold in power and almighty, is one extended into all things and is invisibly diffused throughout them, and of all in which he thus subsists, he is the efficient cause. Do you not see with your eyes that one heaven surrounds the whole world, and that many orders of stars revolve in this? And again, there is one sun, not many, and that this eclipses the splendor of them all by its superior light? So likewise is there one Father, the word of whom also is one, who must be the good offspring of the good Father. If therefore anyone complain that there are not many suns, so should he also complain that many suns, moons, and worlds are not established, and that many other things after the manner of madmen who endeavor to subvert those of nature which are right and good. But as in things visible, one sun gives light to the whole sensible world, so also in things intellectual, the one word of God, filled with all power, secretly, and in a manner imperceptible to us, gives light to all. For why should many suns be required when one is sufficient to affect everything? And again, what need can there be of many sons of God when the one, the only begotten, is sufficient to affect the will of his Father? For if there were many, then would they be either similar or dissimilar? And if they were similar, then would their multiplicity be in vain because one effectuator and in this Almighty would be sufficient for the performance and due ordering of all. But the Word of God and the Wisdom of God, which is one in its essence, brings along with it the light and the life, and indeed all the fullness of goodness. The multitude then of those who were thus vainly and not well joined together in a power that were similar could have no advantage. But if it were necessary that they should be dissimilar, then how could that which were dissimilar, incomplete, and defective in its nature be, on the other hand, an effectuator, and that sufficient for all? But nothing which is born of God is incomplete. The only begotten of God is therefore complete, the efficient. Nor are there many words of God. On the contrary, the God who is of God is sufficient for all, and is almighty, and is the one image of the light of his essence. As the divine words declare, who for the convenience of governing and healing all existing beings was necessarily appointed, who is also in his essence one, but in his powers manifold, and him alone do we declare to be sufficient for the adorning of all things. Because too, there is in man but one soul, and one reasoning faculty, and this at the same time capable of comprehending many things, whether, for example, it cultivate the earth, or fit up a ship, or guide it, or build a house, still it is one and the same, or whether it learn and do many things, still there is but one mind, and one cognitive faculty in man. It is moreover capable at once of many sorts of knowledge. The same man will be the geometrician, or will be skilled in the courses of the stars, or will be perfect in the precepts of the grammarians and the rhetoricians, or he will become a leader in the science of healing, or in its manual operations. Nor has anyone ever yet imagined that there are many souls in any one body. Neither has it been made the matter of wonder that there exists many essences in man, because of his capability of many sorts of knowledge. For should a man find a shapeless piece of clay, and afterwards so model it with his hands, as to impress upon it forms of certain animals, on one figure, the head, and on another, the hands, the feet, or the eyes of a man, and again, that he otherwise imitate by the art of the modeler the cheeks, ears, mouth, nostrils, breast, and shoulders, would it be right also to suppose that because many forms and members have been so wrought on this one body, many were therefore their makers? 
we ought right rather to bestow the full need of praise on the one artificer of the whole who had by one train of thought and the exertion of one executive power so disposed the whole so also of this universal world which is one consisting nevertheless of many parts it cannot be right to erect the many powers visible within it into makers nor again to call these many gods but rather to bless the one who abounds in every species of wisdom and every sort of compounding power him i say who is in truth the power or god the wisdom of god who by means of one almighty power and virtue pervades and remains in the universal whole who also gives establishment and life to all and who for the whole and singular of these bodies and elements in the several situations produced at once from himself the several and various means of subsistence so also the light of the sun is one Yet, by its one incidence, it at once illuminates the air, affords light to the eyes, warmth to the touch, ripens the produce of the earth, gives growth to the plant, and fixes the several periods of time. It also precedes the stars in its course, makes the circuit of the heavens, rises upon the world, and greatly establishes the power of God with respect to all things. All these things it completes in a momentary period of nature. Thus, too, the nature of fire is such as to purify gold, to melt lead, to dissolve wax, to dry wet clay, and to consume dense bodies by means of one burning power. It affects all these things. So likewise, the word of God, the king of all, he who is extended throughout all, is in and pervades all that is both in the heavens and the earth he is the governor of the things which are invisible and visible and he directs by powers unspeakable the suns the heavens and the whole universe he is present to all things in his effectuating power he, and, he, and he remains throughout all he also makes to distill as rain from his own resources the never-failing light to the sun, the moon, and the stars. He has established and perpetually holds fast the heavens as an image of his own greatness. He also fills from the treasury that is with him those hosts of angels and powers of intelligent and rational spirits, at once with life, light, wisdom, and all the abundance of every species of beauty and of goodness. And by one and the same effectuating art, he never fails to supply sustenance to the material elements and to bodies, their commixture and concurrence, their forms, appearances, and characters, and otherwise varies also, and time after time, his innumerable operations, whether in the animals, the plants, or in the beings rational or irrational, at once he provides everything for all by his one power, and clearly shows that this is not a mere lyre as if it were of seven or many strings, but is the one universe of manifold composition, the workmanship of the one word, the maker of the world. Such, therefore, is the common savior of all the word or the God of all, of whom one discoursing on God thus mysteriously speaks, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. For from ancient times and hitherto it knew him not, until he manifested himself in the latter times to those who were holden in the darkness of vice. But he, the maker of the whole world, he who is the common savior of all, has been directly made known to us, and thus existing and as affording to this whole all this assistance but as to this whole world which is governed by one ruler and which consists of the heavens the earth and of the things therein and is now necessarily we should show in a few words what the nature of the being is which he has assigned to it this universe then partakes of two natures of the essence which is more excellent 
and is allied to the divine word, which, being intellectual and rational, is perceived by the mind and apprehended by the reason, and to this is possible all that is superior to material bodies, it partakes also of that which was necessarily brought forth for the use of this, which is matter, is the offspring of bodies, which is understood by the sense of reason both to exist and to be perishable, and which, as I think, has been well said never to have had any independent being. But this which is visible to the bodily sense designates the one universe. This same, too, the whole of which is visible, as well as that which is invisible, may thus be well said to constitute one family of rational beings. Just as in the things that are visible, the nature of bodies is one, while of this some are in the heavens and the aether, those among these being distinct and different, some in the air and on the earth, and of which the things visible are the animals and plants, so also in the essence which is intelligent and invisible, the common kind of them all is one. One also is the nature of the generation of the rational and intelligent faculties, while many and various are the distinctions existing in this. The same, therefore, which has been fabricated out of matter and material bodies, this, which we usually name the sensible world, which consists of the heavens, the earth, and of the things therein, may be likened to an imperial city, in which are many citizens, the houses of some of which have been distinguished as apartments of the state. Of these, the inner ones are neither entered into nor trodden by the many. Some, again, are for stations without, set apart for keepers, in the middle portions. Others, again, are far distant from the court and are left for the inhabitants generally and their various assemblies. Many are thus the stations in the heavens, and many are those inferior to these in the ether and in the air above the earth. The habitable part of the earth assigned to those who walk upon it is this broad space known to us all, those places, however, which are beyond the heavens, are exalted above all mental apprehension, as are those also which are distinguished as inner apartments of the divine house of rule. But those beings who surround the king of all and exalt at the side of the divine word are both enlightened and upholden by means of the rays which are drawn forth from him, as from unfailing fountains of light and are established in the fullness of light. Thus, too, all the enlightened with the incorporeal assemblies of light hold that rank of station which is beyond the heavens, and honor with the highest praises in which are worthy of God, the God who is king of all. In the midst, moreover, he has cast and spread forth the vast heavens, the curtains, as it were, of the azure threshold, which exclude those who are without from the mansion of rule, while the keepers of the intermediate part perform their rounds in this, as being without the gate, with those who are in the heavens, are invested with light and holding lamps as the sun and the moon, honoring him who is beyond all, the king of all. And at his intimation and word, these supply light by means of lamps which cannot be extinguished to those whose lot it is to be in the place of darkness and without the heavens. Thus are brought near to him the powers of the air which are invisible to bodily eyes, and also the animals and other earthly things which are visible. So is man also the chief of them all, whose race was no stranger to that intelligent and rational essence which is invisible, and who was created on the earth to render praise to the Godhead, and rule of him who is the cause of all things. Like as on earth, therefore, there is spread over the whole world but one, and that the same human nature. And as many nations have arisen out of this, and the manner of life of every race, its fashions, modes, and governments are different, not only of the barbarians and wild, but also of the peaceable, fashionable, and wise, and as there are among these both slaves and free men, poor and rich, those also who differ in color, as the Scythians, and those whose lot it is to dwell without, in the west the Hindus also at the rising of the sun, and the Ethiopians at its setting, Greeks too, and others whose destiny it is to reside among princes, 
and among all these again some bear rule over portions of the nations and others are wholly subject with the great king of all moreover some are considered as in the place of friends some are elevated to the greatest honors other are more especially ennobled for their virtuous deeds some again fill their ranks of slaves and others bearing spears and shields surrounding the sovereign others again are military officers in the cities while others fill the station of rule in these others too have met the fate of the vulgar and others are considered as in the place of enemies and haters still the whole of these are men and one is the common species of them all over them all too is there one king one only power vested with his own authority which is all supreme and to this same according to the law and edict of the state to him alone the father and lawgiver is the title of great king ascribed while he the word descending from above and running as it were throughout the whole of the governors and the governed subjects to the one yoke of rule every race placed under his hand elevating some to the highest honor and to others rendering that which is their due as it is with these things so one is the generating intelligent and rational essence which is over all and well might it be said that one is the kind or genus of these things and that they are all nothing more than brethren derived from one as made of him who is the father of the word of god there are then multitudes of nations and of kinds of these and there is a portion the more virtuous and the contrary the differences too of these as to mind and opinion are innumerable as are the fashions and modes of life and constitutions and the contrary but not as to their natures for the nature of them all is one and the kind or genus is one it is of the variety of their wills that they have found out many and different fashions and modes of life hence are the companies of angels of spirits and of incorporeal and invisible powers some of which are resplendent and glorious as enlightened by the splendor of the divine word others are dark blacker than any ethiopian and destitute of all rational light this kind is quite deserving of the middle place as capable at once of both the excellent and the base but the king is one that only power which is god above all both of those who are in the heavens and above the heavens and he it is who holds by the law and edict of sovereign rule the things that are in the air on the earth and under the earth and which are of all and in all this law and edict is moreover one he who lives in all the word of god the minister or agent not as that dying utterance which is set forth from the mouth of mortals into the air but as it has now been made known to us by the gospel of things in their nature possible the governor of all in all wisdom and power he i say who as the word of god distributes fully and in justice to all the things which are most suitable to them and gives to each and to every one of them the stations which are suitable to those which are near those of happiness but those of the contrary to those who have fallen from virtue as they may have severely deserved he at once gives to all like those who are on the earth to reside in different localities to some to exalt at the side of the heavenly sovereignties to others to keep watch without to others to dwell beyond these and at a distance while all with one mouth and according to the doctrine and instructions of each celebrate the praise of the king and god of all and i say who bear this law in their hearts and in the mind of their nature that they should confess that one who is the likeness of the image of sovereign rule who is the only begotten word him who is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every creature as the divine words mysteriously teach and to the honoring of him are all whether the rulers or the ruled in every house and city at once devoted not with inanimate colors variously set forth in pictures or images but within 
on the hearts of their intellectual faculties as upon intelligent tablets is the worship of his godhead inscribed thus do all those who are subject to his power tender their worship irrespective of those vicious demons and wicked spirits and rulers of this world who consider themselves as in the situation of enemies and haters those who have assimilated themselves to the image of fraudulent rule and put forth various books in the place of others that is innumerable false scriptures ascribed to that fearful name to that is expressed name which governs the law but far superior to the law is the name which they have surreptitiously assumed to themselves thus do they succeed in casting down to the earth among bodies elements and the portions of the world the whole race of mortal men hence have men feared and served the creatures more than the creator of these and again they named as gods for themselves these very powers contenders and rebels against god which in their perverseness so became gods these i say which never existed as such and well may those be considered as enemies and haters for whom the law of truth has commanded us to flee and to take refuge in him alone who is the word the savior of all him who cast forth the seed which is of himself in order that it may produce not only in the heavenly places but also on earth and as a sign both to those that are in the heavens and to those that are in the elements of the earth one and the same portion of kind so that the rational mind which is in man and is of that incorporeal intelligent essence and of the kind of the divine word which pervades all that has hitherto been generated is nourished on earth by its meditations on him and previously trained for its transition conversion to virtue hence too is it previously instructed and taught to provide for its passing to the children of its own kind holy therefore is this alone of those that are on earth through its participation with the divine word worthy of the name of rational he has then necessarily assigned a place on earth to the mind and rational soul so that a small image of the great city of god mentioned in the example of a little while ago given has been set up on earth nor is there in the whole empire of god nor even a place on the earth exempt from this lot and it was right that praise should be ascribed in every part of the universe to the word the common father of all by those who had been generated of himself hence even the element of earth is not exempt from being entrusted with this rational portion not only by those who are beyond the world and in the heavens and the rational beings that are in the air but also by those that dwell on the earth is that just praise sent up to the maker and father of all which indeed the divine word teaches when it thus commands every man to sing the praise which is due to god praise ye god from the heavens praise ye him in the heights praise him all ye his angels praise him all ye his host praise him sun and moon praise him all ye stars and light praise him ye heavens of heavens after the things which are upon the earth he the sacred writer reasons thus praise ye god from the whole earth he then also reasons upon this rational family of man this i say which divides itself from everything else into various companies and orders of rank in this manner praise him ye kings of the earth and all people ye great and all ye judges of the earth young men and maidens old men with children let them praise the name of the lord for great is his name alone and his praise is in the earth and in the heavens with these words therefore he leads over against and along with the companies that are in the heavens those also that are in the earth to the praise of the king of all for to him alone in truth and to no other god to him who is beyond all the heavens above do companies that are above the curvatures of the heavens ascribe honor and praise to him as their father do the host of angels and spirits the offspring of light which is intelligent render the praises which are unutterable to him also the sun the moon and stars which are in the circuit of distant worlds and run their lengthened courses in the spaces of ether and form a crown as it were to him the invisible powers also which wing their way in the free expanse of air proclaim the need of praise and blessing which is both due and becoming how then 
after the detail of these things could it be becoming that the element of earth alone should be wanting in the provision which prevails in all or that this nature which is generative of all these fruits should stand alone in withholding its need of praise or that the life which is passed on earth bearing every sort of fruit should be barren as to that of the intelligent creature would it rather not appear that this would seem good to him who is the fullness of all wisdom the maker of all that he should for his own sake sow this locality of earth with beings intelligent and rational and should for the use of these provide the rest of the creatures as also that which is generative of fruits and flowers and that he should here also join the praise of men to that which is rendered by the companies of all else to his own father and this was so done in former times this that man who had been made in the image of god honored with hymns and songs the word his father together with the divine and rational assemblies and with several orders of angels his mind had not then erred in the setting up of inanimate objects under the phantasms of demoniacal deception nor under the stories of error common to polytheism for these things recently and after a time became known through the vain babblings of the poets those primitive chiefs of our race who hitherto had not learned the arts of modeling hewing and carving and had made no use of this extreme metalworking art of evil deeds called upon the maker of the whole universe and their lord in the simplicity of their souls and in the mind of their unsophisticated nature and him alone did they confess and their instruction which was mental to be the lord and god of all and as these did so did the chief of our nature adam and also did the hebrew race which was in ancient times beloved of god and received as a son from his father the good inheritance of the observances of the fear of god but these honored nothing with purity of life and with the observances of the fear of God, except the one God, the King who is above all, and his word who is the Savior of all. On this account, they were considered worthy of the revelation of the word of God, of prophecy, and of the doctrines of righteousness. Thus, therefore, the word of God, the maker of all things, fills with his seed of intelligent and rational being all parts and places that are above the world, that are in the heavens, and on this element of earth, that seed then which falls upon the earth constituting the intelligent and rational plant is itself the knowledge which belongs to man and which is now contained the multifarious stem of herbage as it were of an earthly and perishable body many stars of the life with which is mortal surrounding it if then an enlightened cultivation meet it so that it be cleansed from the obstinacy of matter and recognize the sower the word who is above the heavens and henceforth render praise to him mediating as a child on his primitive teaching and in due time rendering the corn ears of its superiority the complete fruit of its rational nature it shall as in the time of harvest lay down by the death of the life which is mortal those luxuriance of the stem that are without together with the earthly and corruptible clothing of the body which it shall have now well employed for the growth and perfection of the fruit and happily shall it put off this in due time the same too as he becomes more excellent and collects the powers of his superiority into the treasure of things that are good is preserved as the perfect that with the perfect he may be led on to him also who is the sower and the cultivator of all he renders the perfect fruit of that praise which is due to God. And because he has in this life recognized him alone as his father, king, and lord, and has together with his relative and sister beings already mentioned confessed him alone to be God, his maker and creator, he will that he also may, as in the place of the society which is more excellent, exalt and honor him with the honor that is becoming and just, not name any other thing god which it is not right should be called god but him alone to whom all things give a similar testimony him whom all creation visible and invisible 
even as he alone is the efficient cause of all, names it God, and whom it worships. These things, then, being such, let us now again approach our subject afresh. As already laid down, these heavens, then, places in the heavens which are viewed by the bodily senses, this earth also, and air, as well as this whole constitution of things which is the, of them, and which may be likened to a great city, differ in no respect in the nature from those inanimate elements, which are in its portions, the earth, the waters, the air, and fire. But it is not necessary that the denizens of this great city should be considered as of the same material, nor is it that we should affirm the seed of the rational soul and of the perishable body to be one and the same. For the mind, the reason, the rational soul, and the whole of the nature which is intelligent may accurately and well be affirmed to be the seed of the word of God, the creator of all. Nor were these any part of the earth, or of the air, nor of any essence, cold or hot, but of those superior faculties by which they were made worthy to partake in things most excellent, because things prior in order are the cause of those which succeed them. And the first things were those generated of the word. After these, those that are irrational. After the primary essences, therefore, were those latter ones which followed these as causes. But the primitive ones, the origin of production, exists only in intelligent souls, on whose account it was that the seed of passive bodies was also prepared. For it was necessary that a sufficient house or residence should be prepared for these. Hence the primary heavens appeared to be a place suitable to the people of this city, who were both above it and in it, and the, the curvatures within the heavens for those inhabitants who should be distinguished accordingly. But thou, reasonable soul, wouldst never designate as denizens of the city on earth, whether the sensitive being of the fierce animals, or any kind of reptile refusing instruction, or indeed any of those that partake in the nature and name of irrational. For these are thy slaves, which have been subjected by the law of nature, and they necessarily render the service which is due to rational beings as to their lords. For the agricultural ox places his neck willingly in the yoke, for the purposes of agriculture for man. The carrying ass, too, confesses his own nature. The horse, also, which his lord rides, exalts, and the hunting dog fondles on him who feeds him. The flocks, too, and herds, and again all sorts of possession and animals are given to men. Even the fierce beasts are at his ready service. These same, too, we kill and reduce to subjection. We also take by means of reason the bird that flies in the heights. We also bring up those beings which are beneath in the depths of the sea, and likewise within it, the nature plainly teaches that all these things have been established for the sake of man. Man is therefore the progeny of the divine word, not for the sake of any other thing, but that only of his father, the word in order that he might see, and by his knowledge distinguish all the wisdom of his father, which consists in the workmanship visible throughout all creation and that he should assimilate himself to this same, while hitherto youthful, and should in everything emulate his father as to law, reason, knowledge, and wisdom, and should live as taught that he is the image of excellence, and should learn that together with the companies that are in heaven, and he should, as a prophet and priest, send up from the earth those praises which are due to the king of all, and to God, who is the cause of all, in representations not unlike these, therefore, does the Word, the instructor of all nature, wondering at the various excellencies of the nature which is in man, cry out and say in the divine praises, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visiteth him? Thou hast made him a little less than the angels, with honor and glory hast thou clothed him, and hast given him dominion over the works of thy hands, and hast placed all beneath his feet, all flocks and herds and wild beasts of the desert and the birds that are in the heavens and the fishes in the sea which dwell in the paths of the sea. It is this rational species alone, beloved of God, 
of those that are on the earth, respecting which another prophet, speaking of God, teaches, thus plainly but mysteriously, that in his essence he is in the image of God. And God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fishes that are in the sea, and over the fowl of the heavens, and over the beasts, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And to that word he also added the deed, So God made man, and said that he made him in the image of God. And again, more particularly, he established the fact that the image was in the likeness of God from the divine inbreathing, when he said, And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. He also teaches that he gave to him the more excellent authority and rule in these words when saying, Let them have dominion over all that is on the earth, over the beasts, the fowls, the creeping thing, and the animals. And to all these words does that nature give its testimony, which has put everything under his hand and has subjected all things to this rational creature. But if the divine words can obtain no hearing with thee, still I cannot think that thy mind is so entirely darkened that thou canst not think within thyself. How it is that bodies and bodily substances, or whatever other divine thing it is which moves the body, should consist of this possible excellence, this I say that such bodies should know how to avail itself of a discriminating reason, as to what its own essence is, this that it should deliver instruction by memory, this that it should extend itself to the contemplation of all things, but be thyself and ask whether the nature of the body can understand the constitution of the world, the operations of the primary elements, the beginning, the end, the middle portion, enumeration and succession of the seasons, the changes of times, the revolutions of the years, the appointed order of the stars, and I know not how many other things which men have by the experiments of geometry, computation, and enumeration pointed out. For these results are incorporeal, and the contemplation of them is purely rational, that any one should make them adjuncts of the bones, the flesh, and the blood, would be gr <laughs> would folly infinitely great, and well might they be asked, who thus think of these things? since these five senses comprehend all the faculties of the body, which of them is it that can teach man the contemplation of any doctrine? And it, is it the sight of the eyes? But this distinguishes between colors and forms only. If you say the hearing, you only name the recipient of sounds acute and grave, but not any rational perception. And again, in like manner, the taste is the sense discriminative of sweetness, or of food as it might be, the smell too is a trier of sense, but not of doctrines, and again, this sense which is extended over the whole body will touch and discriminate things cold and hot, hard and soft, but not virtue, not yet that wisdom which is much more excellent. And how is it that within the irrational animals have they not eyes and ears and nostrils? The, the sense of taste and of touch, but neither of these can be brought near to the efficiency of reason, because the doctrines which philosophy alone can apprehend are not of the body, nor of the sense that is irrational, they belong solely to that superiority which attends the rational soul, which is superior to the nature of the body, and which takes up its abode in mankind alone. If, however, anyone wished impudently to persist by way of reasoning and affirm that we possess nothing beyond these irrational animals, that like these we are born and are subject to corruption because the one provision of us all is of the earth, the passive nature of the body is the same, the sense is in nothing superior, the labor again and rest is in the same manner one, as is the blood of us all, the corruption of the body and its dissolution into the primitive elements, Hitherto, however, you do not say that any one of these can, like the rational animal, be brought near to the contemplation of things incorporeal, can bear about it in any rational instruction or lay up learning in its memory, can consider discourses about virtue and vice and as to philosophy that it 
ever even entered its mind. But all these things I might omit, because all men do not possess them. I only ask your reason these things. Was there a city ever yet constructed by beings destitute of reasons? Or is there in these the mind of the artificer, of the builder, and of the weaver, or of the agriculturalist? Or has a ship ever been fitted up by them? Or has the astonishing art of governing such vessels such so much as even entered their minds? When, behold, the things which are bodily are with them far more excellent than with us, because of all animals, man is the most defective. And as the poets sing, the human race is infirm, nor can we say how much he is inferior in magnitude of the body to the elephant, or to be thought of as to the strength and abundance with the camel species. And, uh... To many other animals must he cede the victory, both as to power and swiftness of foot. What can they scent better than the chasing dogs, uh, which are taught to course by the smell, or be said to see better than any antelope, which because they see well are in Greek named the seers? Or is it necessary we should hence say how much weaker the body of a man naturally is than that of a bear or a lion or a panther or many other animals, or how quickly or easily he is deceived and overcome by those that attack him nevertheless this diminutive creature will whenever he pleases subdue any of those already mentioned not by bodily or corporeal strength for in this respect he is greatly inferior and is insufficient to fill the stomach of even one bear but there is a certain nature within him more excellent than the body the power of the mind and of the intelligent soul and it is by the superiority of wisdom that he affects these astonishing things. By means of these things hast thou, as a dear child, been honored of God. Why so despiseth thou greatness as to think that this thy whole is mere flesh, and likenest thou body with the divine and rational knowledge which is within thee to these irrational beings, to the whole of which is perishable? Will then neither the irrational nature of the animals, nor this common name irrational, nor yet the openly apparent useful servitude under which these have never sought excuse from the bearing of burdens or of labor, suffice to persuade thee that all is thus because God has given to thee the dominion and sovereignty over them all? Man alone, therefore, of those that are on the earth, he who is in the image of God, carries on and introduces his matters wherever he pleases at one time he trains the animals that are suited to the ch chase at other he pastures the flocks that are adapted to this at another he avails himself of the tame animals for his service reducing their fierce nature to peaceable subjection at another having so reduced them he brings them into peaceable proximity with himself at having another brought them together by the multifarious means of reason he confines them to the house and not this alone but he will also take into his hands the injurious reptiles and play with them and of those that breathe out death and reject instruction will he make his sport man alone of those that are on the earth is not to be persuaded to take up his residence in the caves that are in the deserts or in the heights he accordingly builds cities with walls and adorns these with streets palaces mansions and other edifices man alone of all of those that are on earth considers not his provisions after the unchangeable manner and usages of irrational animals for these destitute as they are of knowledge avail themselves of the aid of nature alone and receive their provision from the stem unprepared by agriculture and uncleansed from the weed he however by his knowledge cleanses this thus too does he pulverize fully season and make it well to pass the fire of the wheat also he will whenever he pleases make bread he is moreover careful so to provide that a healthy provision of food may be secured and every profitable commodity, either of the vine, the olive, or of the fruit, tree of every flavor does he appropriate, and these does he alone apply to the sanative uses of the body. This being alone, of those that are on the earth, has by means of rule and reason discovered that mode of life which is regular and orderly, has become a leader of armies, has engaged in the public conflicts and in the subsidiary arts, and these very many things pertaining to doctrine 
has he, by his rational superiority, put forth. This being alone of those that are on earth, preserving in himself the model of excellence, has determined the measure, the weights, the extents, and several sorts of justice. He too distinguishes governing all by reason, the things which should and should not be done, and hence he knows how to give to everyone as it shall be right. The fishes, however, the birds and the animals will devour one another, because no law prevails among them, but to men has God given justice, which is their supreme excellence. As says one of the poets, and according to my opinion, extremely well, this being alone of those that are on the earth, invincing within himself the image of the word of God, erects on high a house of judgment, and acting after the manner of God's just judge, duly determines the award of life and of death, and apportioning life to some, and assigning death to others. This being alone of those that are on the earth will confide his life to the small section of a tree. He has also discovered the science of shipbuilding. He too will guide the ship on the back of the sea, will commit his person to the depths of the humid element and beat back the death that stands at his side. He alone looks up to the heavens and to that governor of all who binds together all distances as to the safety of those who navigate the seas. Man alone of those that are on the earth has discovered the doctrines of astronomy, has, while moving below in the body and clothed with the weight of mortality, ascended up in his mind on high and making the circuit of the sun, the moon, and the stars foretells what shall come to pass, as he also does the eclipses of the moon and vicissitudes of the seasons and the changes of times. Man alone of those that are on the earth is viewed as the assistant of nature, has discovered the means of healing, and has by his understanding applied to this the powers of roots and drugs with their combinations and mixture by weight and due proportion. He too has become skillful in the healing of infirm bodies and the helps of life of man. This being alone of those that are on the earth, not having arrived at the manner of life of the gramomivores and animals, or has well applied himself to the requirements of his own nature. In the winter season, he accordingly cast the seed into the earth, and applyingly the sweat of his labor to agriculture is repaid in the autumn with his, the fruits consequent upon his toil. This being alone of those that are on the earth, collects together by his rational knowledge the doctrines relating to all things, the science and composition of music, as well as that of investigation by discussion. He also proceeds on the manner of life, and to the fame attendant on philosophy, and is thus he hastens forward the love of that superiority which is vested within him, availing himself not of the bodily sense, but of the faculty of knowledge, and of the stimulating power of reason. Man alone of those that are on the earth bears about him by means of his memory the histories of things done in former times, converses with those who are now no more as with those who are at hand, examines the opinions of the wise who have existed at any period, and from these rather than from those who are his contemporaries does he receive profit, and thus by the faculty of reason, cognate with that of thought, does he exist with those who have long ceased to be. This being alone of those that are on earth duly regulates the voice of the chant by the divisions of the chord. He also has divided the primary letters of the alphabet by the grammatical art, and has discovered the powers and province of reason. He too has determined the combination of verbs and of nouns, and well as the precepts of rhetoric and grammar. All these, moreover, does he bring together preserve in his memory and bring forward as stores filled with every sort of treasure in one mind too does he comprehend both the events and histories of former times these will he bring forth whenever he pleases as a river from an unfailing source and inundate therewith the hearing of all present <laughs> man alone of those that are on the earth is in his works like unto god who is over all 
Anything which he pleases will he form into animals. Even this inanimate matter will he change into the form, figure, and fashion of every sort of creature by means of this instructive nature. And the reasoning faculty will he set about immolating even the maker of all things. And man will make man at one time in stone, and another in wood, and another in flowers and many colors, and well as in the forms that are impervious to change, and indeed every sort of animal and of plant will he by the same means imitate, showing forth fully by his works the power vested within him of the image of God. This being alone of those who are on the earth will imitate on the earth whereon he walks the celestial sphere and will engrave on the matter of brass the likeness of the very heavens and on this will he impress a copy of the stars both wandering and fixed he will also appoint by the modeler's art the limits both of times and of seasons and will surround the exterior of his sphere with the images of various animals by the abundance of his knowledge moreover and by means of many observations will he imitate the heavenly sphere and like god will allow the heavens whose revolutions are above the earth and with the universal whole and whose revolving is an unceasing miracle to revolve with these things that are on earth in the similitude which is of earthly material the angel of the seasons too will shout as it were with a loud voice and all at once in a moment who are in motion the doors too at the coming of in of the seasons throw themselves open as it were of their own accord and the inanimate images of the birds placed round about it the sphere speak out in chirpings the moon also which is on the earth runs its course with that in the heavens and the mere brass of itself changes its fashions after the manner of the moon showing itself now dichotomized, now on the wane, and now in its full light. Thus the images of the seasons follow the analogy of those in nature, and the human-made world contends with that of the workmanship of the Word of God. Man alone of those that are on the earth can by means of words to not be uttered of prayers acceptable to God and by virtue of the fear of God invinced both in word and life drive far away the invisible nature of concealed demons but further when he had even departed from the right way he could effect all this by a power such as would by songs and incantations subject the kind of these which flies in the air and again would seize by means of force and the appendices restrictive of nature those unembodied powers which fly over any part of the earth just as they would the flying sparrows he would lead on or bind these whenever he chose and sitting up the images of fabricated gods would show these by his doings that his own power was far superior to that of fabricated deity of such man alone shows of what kind of superiority of his intellectual and incorporeal being is and establishes the fact that his power is impervious either to subjugation or deterioration by calamity for he will prepare his body for the fire the sword the fierce beasts and the depths of the sea and he will approach every species of torment he knows too that his nature that it is perishable and fleeting transient dissoluble but that which resides within and is unyielding and that this is different from that which perishes he proved who cried out bruise bruise the form but me thou wilt not bruise and again proclaiming with freedom of speech burn or roast the body and be satisfied with me when thou hast drunk my blackened blood but before the stars descend to the earth and the earth ascends to the heavens I will present to thee not one conciliating, perturbed expression. One of the friends of God, moreover, when suffering evils, put forth these words, What shall separate me from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or hunger, or nakedness, or cold, or the sword? I myself, too, have seen in these times some whose eyes were digged out, others who were deprived of their legs by the cautery, and others who were crucified, their whole bodies hastening to dissolution, 
and their mortal nature subject rebuke, while the conscious mind residing within them attached to God was immovable, impervious to subjection, and unyielding to these hardships, clearly proving to those of sound mind that their faculty of excellence was a thing altogether different from that which was perishable. This alone of the animals that are on the earth partaking of the divine in breathing is worthy of the favor of the deity. He too will hold converse with the angels of God and will apprehend the foreknowledge of things to come to pass. At one time, by means of dreams, at another, when so invested by the power of God with the spirit that he will even announce the prophecy of things future, and by manifestation of deeds such as these, he will confirm the fact of his fellowship with deity. This animal alone recognizes in everything something greater and more excellent than any that is visible. Him who is invisible to the eyes and imperceptible to the touch as well as to every faculty of bodily sense, but is visible to the mind and understanding alone, him does he by his special teaching and the learning of which his nature is capable confess, and him does he call God, to him also does he render praise and shows by means of his knowledge, his relationship with the deity. This being alone has risen to be the spectator of the great works of the word of God and is fitted to worship his father, him, I say, who is higher than the heavens with the praises which are proper for the deity and to be assimilated to the company of the angels in heaven because to him alone of the animals that are on the earth has this superiority been assigned. By means of this he recognizes from the mind of his nature him who is the cause of every good and is enjoined to render as to return due to a father the praises of thanksgiving and blessing which are becoming. The testimony of all these things does that word of the doctrine and erudition which is divine confirm that is of his undying nature and equal of the citizens that are in heaven is this being alone of those who are on the earth. This intelligent and rational essence, I say, which is in man and that he is the dear child of the divine word, the common savior of all and that in his nature he agrees both as to image and form with this his father. For if this rational animal who has become partaker in all this superiority, this which alone of those that are on the earth is in the image of God, this brother of the divine hosts and of the angels which are in heaven, had been duly led by his nature and had from ancient time adhered to the divine law, he would indeed have been freed from this earthly and corruptible mode of life and would have continued in his conversation on earth as in a state of migration. Had he first of all studied divine things only, he would have indeed effected his departure hence to those things which belonged to him and would have registered as among those that were perfect apart from this his state of defect and of infantine constitution thus therefore has man of necessity put on a corruptible and dissoluble body and in this though the mercy of his father that calamity may not be his permanent lot and that he may not be tied interminably to corruption Soon, therefore, shall this corruptible be dissolved, and shall receive a participation with those who are incorruptible. For just as that which is conceived in the womb puts on the clothing of its locality, and an infant to be born, when the period of its destined months has arrived, casts this off, and accordingly comes forth into the light, inhales the purer air, and henceforward is considered as of the nature of man, so also is this perceived perfectible species as believed to be among men as also opposed to the still superior one a mere infant and as yet a fetus only conceived on earth clothed in this corruptible skin by which by the mercy of the great gift of god it is necessary it should cast off in order that it should not be forever harassed with these defective things which you it should in due time go forth into the light and pass on to the life which is impervious to corruption on this account well have the companies of the wise the attached to god pressed as they have been by participation 
and these corruptible bodies desired their change for the better and followed after their equals the children of their city which is above even as he was circumstanced who said in the divine word wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from this body of death and again even if we live in the body still we labor not in the flesh he adduces his reason too and says for our labor of culture is in heaven and we draw near to the city of the living God which is in heaven and to the assembly of myriads of angels and to the church of the firstborn who are written in heaven these are the words of a notable man and as of all those who love God if however many are so foolish as to be attached to the lust that are here that they are to the present time but infants in intellect what has this to do with right reason for that which is conceived in the womb exalts in this its usual locality fears its departure from it and lest it should be extracted from internal darkness and weeps when it comes forth to the light still even these did but those things which happened to their natural birth duly take place with them when they come forth from darkness to light well and elegantly born thus would they at due time and season be brought forth each receive their natural air and breath breathe about him the healthy vigor of man thus would each be delighted with the provisions of the breasts and in infancy then be placed under the hands of a nurse and be delivered over to instructors and teachers and doctors until he came forth a man complete Thus, too, would he pass a virtuous and honorable life, great in wealth, in the abundance of possessions and power and rule, and the other stages of distinctions, in the increase of all those things which result from a happy birth, of those which multiply by means of instructions, and of those other innumerable things which conduce to the experience of a happy life. But if any unnatural contortion should happen to that which is conceived in the womb, so that it affects such an one as his coming forth in birth what need can there be for my saying that the infant was distorted within the womb and refused to come forth to the light and that it must suffer by the iron instruments prepared for parturition which shall violently and painfully be placed upon it the revulsion which is also unnatural nor would it be worthy even of the one birth even of the life of man or of the things belonging to this but on the contrary that it should go forth from darkness to darkness and not only be deprived of the life of man but also of the name as are these things so is he who passes the life which is human on earth differing in nothing from the irrational and ignorant infant or from that which is yet but a fetus in the womb nor can he be compared to with those bodies which are com without the angels and divine spirits he is even as an ignorant child, and because of the excess of his childishness, he exalts in the clothing of the body which is about him, loves the womb of his concealment, and knows not the locality which surrounds him, where murder, darkness, and all other species of mishap feed, as it were, in the pastures of wickedness. One of the ancients says, when showing that the air which is on the earth is humid and unclear, that it consists of many compounds resulting from the innumerable vapors which arrives from the earth one would think too that man were such although as an infant good nevertheless if he pass the present life as it is becoming to his nature and evince accordingly the conduct which is suitable to its law that he think not beyond the measure of his stature nor spurn the nature which he has borne him as a mother nor again remain ignorant of his father, but recognize his father who is in heaven, the common savior of all, and render to him the service of thanksgiving, because he has made him to partake in the things which are good, be brought up in the instruction of righteousness, and previously study in his conversation which is on the earth, the life of heaven, well shall such a one, when he shall depart this mortal life, and shall put off the body, have the angels of God for his obstetricators, and when he is to be born to the life to come then shall both the good powers receive him as the nurse and the divine assemblies teach him that word of god too that teacher of the conversation which is in heaven shall lead him on as a dear child to the completion of everything that is good and shall instruct him in the doctrine of the kingdom of heaven 
And when he shall have made him complete and wise, he shall give him up to his father, the king of all, and shall clothe him both in body and soul, which are now incorruptible, with a vesture of light exceeding description, so that henceforth he shall be even for the common advantage of all, such is the last state of such a one. But he who exalts against the course of his nature participates in the perversion which is not good, and despises the earth, the mother that bore him, and again impiously recognizes not the word of God, the common savior of all, but subscribes to a multitude of fathers who have no existence, instead of that one who is, and calls the God which never had any being, instead of that one who alone is true, and again, holy plunges in pursuit of the things of this moist, humid, and corruptible being into the filthy and lawless lusts, that this not as the infant involuntarily, but willingly, as of his free counsel, chooses to himself these vices, and so acts his latter state shall clearly be but the counterpart of that pointed out by the example above given. For no happy countenance or smiling of good angels shall greet him, nor when he goes forth into light shall the divine powers receive him as foster fathers. On the contrary, endeavoring in his extreme state to extreme egress and to hide himself within in the concealment of the body and members when the dissolution of the body draws near and he would assume the perversion which is out of nature, then shall those who are appointed to this forcibly attach themselves to him and drag him forth then too after his departure hence his miserable soul being reduced to sighing and lamentation shall he not have the light and life which is good for his receptacle but on the contrary darkness and the place of corruption and judgment of god moreover shall consign him thus impure and unclean as filthy and abominable to the purification and punishment which is by fire because he would not be instructed by the word or reason, nor adhere to the divine law when it was in his power to do so. He, therefore, who in the example above was as an infant conceived in the womb, in everything so defective and in every respect so destitute of power, that hitherto he could make no use either of the thoughts of his soul or the senses of his body, that mind indeed which is hitherto but as an infant in man, may well be said by way, as it were, of experimental comparison with those incorporeal and divine rational beings that are in heaven to be altogether a child, even if such were the wisest of men, or even more perfect than those that are on earth, still he would, when compared in himself with his future perfect state, be nothing better than an infant. For what his state of excellence shall be when he arrives at manhood, it will be easy thus to show. For if, when hitherto as an infant, and confined within this unyielding wall of earthly and corruptible being, he bears about him such a faculty of excellence that he knows not only the things that are on earth, and fabricates them by art, but also anticipates the life which is in heaven, and becomes like to God himself, makes too, whenever he pleases, likenesses of things in the heavens and of those on the earth, can do all these things, just as those which have already been recounted. These, I say, when immersed as he is in all this refuse of the body and blood, what then ought we suppose he will do, when he shall have proceeded to the perfect measure of man's estate, and shall have been liberated from these injurious bounds of corruption, these humid and wasting properties of the body, and has made a partaker of the life which is incorruptible, and of a body which is impervious to death. For if this seed alone of all the reasoning faculty be thus all able and powerful on earth, when as yet it was capable of rendering the full return of fruit, but has even been cast forth into the moist locality of the refuse of a corruptible body, it shall henceforth be able fully to know of what sort the return of perfect fruit of this seed shall be as sown in the soul, when it shall have been made to partake of an adequate culture, and shall have been removed hence, and have been planted in a superior locality, in land good and fertile, where that heavenly word 
that sower of all things and planter of every good thing shall receive back his own seed and shall in the pastures of incorporeal and unembodied souls as in the paradise of them who love god himself water his own plant shall nourish it to perfection and make it arrive at the increase of goods innumerable you will perceive therefore the greatness of the complete state of man's superiority from his changes and increments here if you will consider that the infant just born is in no respect superior to the worm that it cannot after the manner of the irrational animal even make use of the bodily senses nevertheless this defective lame infirm and thoughtless being will when grown in his stature arrive at all this change and variation in the course of time will receive all this superiority power and beauty both of body and soul so that should those who be get him to see him they could not distinguish whether this were he who was sown by them in the womb and conceived in darkness whether this were he who came forth out of this darkness to be brought up with milk and the swaddling bands this who is now the man who in wisdom and knowledge contemplates the whole world this who subjugates everything that is on earth and should any one by comparison as it were of the divine faculty and of the angels and of the child just now born place the complete man in the midst he would not find a perfect equality as to the child with respect to the perfect man and of the perfect man with respect to the superior power but the inferiority of the person of the child to, to the man to be much greater than is the inferiority of the man to the faculty of the angels for the human infant lately born cannot be compared in its being even with those irrational animals which may just now be brought forth but he who has come out the perfect man is and is contemplated as the friend of god will henceforward become a partaker in the divine spirit and will hold converse with the angels will arrive at a love and attachment to the conversation which is in heaven and will previously prepare himself by purity of life and the fear of god not placed at any great distance of limit for an equality with the angels and will be made a partaker both of their life and superiority which the divine word also showed when it said what is the man that thou art mindful of him and of the son of man that thou visiteth him thou hast made him a little lower than the angels with honor and glory hast thou crowned him is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visiteth him thou hast made him a little lower than the angels with honor and glory thou hast crowned him if then the child when brought up to the full stature of his nature and supplied with the provision and instruction proper for it receives all this change and variety and no one can disbelieve this his change on account of the openness of the experiment why need we wonder if even this perfectible mind which is in man such as it is when still in childhood with respect to its more complete and perfect growth should when it comes forth to full growth of its stature be in dignity as the angels we do see however that the nature of man undergoes dissolution by death but what of this is it not that we are the more convinced by it that the soul is immortal for if when immersed in a corruptible and mortal body it evinced all this force of superiority which we have already shown how shall it not when it shall have separated itself from its participation in corruption and shall have laid down immortality as a bandage then act in its own power in a manner less impeded than it does now do you not perceive that so long as it entertains an attachment to the body it thence acts basely but if it refuse participation with the body it then subsists within itself and thence is its essence clearly known to the incorporeal for how can that which is opposed to the body be of its nature the thoughts too of the soul are healthy so long as the bodily passions are infirm but the same will be dark and obscure when the body labors under the lusts hence so long as the soul is infatuated its whole attachment will be to the body and when attached to the body it will be shorn of its excellence when however it becomes strong in opposition to the body and flies from that lustful passions it then becomes wise 
and when it has become wise, it turns away its face from, from a participation in mortality, and forthwith gives up itself to the knowledge which is pure, and in a small degree withdraws itself from the stimulating nature of the body. When, moreover, it is powerful with respect to the riches which are its own, it then happily becomes more abundantly enlightened, directed, and stirred up. Then, too, will it partake in knowledge, wisdom, and every sort of excellence when it has ceased to countenance the motions of the bodily passions. And so long as it counts upon this excellence, it deigns not to draw near with the eyes of the body, nor will it act by any other of its senses, when, moreover, it thus vigorously shuts itself up, carries itself within, and withdraws to a distance from the things which affect the senses, and are visible, and when, near only to the body, still turns with the eye of the soul to another quarter, and is itself united with itself, then again will it avail itself of the mind that is enlightened, and of the recollection which is pure, and will put forth and nourish for itself the reason which is imperturbed, and thus will every reasoning power exert itself without control. But should any of the things which are hurtful suddenly happen to the body, so that a mote should injure the sight of the eyes, immediately would the sight of the soul be disturbed. And should remissness be given to the body, and the soul partake in the drunkenness, gluttony, lust, and the rest of its pleasures, thus reduced in itself to vice, the corruptible body, too domineering over it like a wild and fierce beast, and itself remaining below, as it were, in the depths, will be filled with error, folly, and every sort of infatuation. What necessity, then, is there that we should fear death, which is only the determination of the freedom of the soul from the body? And for what purpose is the lying down of that which is faulty? Is it not for receiving the aid of that which is more excellent? And that we should confess the lives of those who loved God, than to be in truth holy and happy, when nothing of an adverse nature shall control them? If then, while this rational nature continues in this locality, and resides in this vessel, as it were, on the earth, clothed with a dense and earthly body, not unlike some earthen vessel, and wholly compressed within this its vesture, it be such that it will mount on high in thought, will mortify the members of the body together with their lusts, by means of patience, and the restraint of the desires will be hastened, and hastening on to the life of those that are incorporeal, will separate and deliver itself at all times by the precepts of wisdom from an admixture with that which is vile, and will ever delight itself beforehand with the thoughts that it soon shall submit to death, if indeed such be at any time released from the bonds and agitation of wing common to the cares and anxiety that are here, and thus fly away in his departure, and change the place on earth, and meet with that which he loved, how he will then be circumstanced, ask not. For when he shall receive his body, and shall have changed his nature from corruption to incorruption, his shall be a conversation which is equal to that of the angels in heaven. And in the semblance of light, and of the sunbeam, shall he be, and of the form which even the angels of God live, and as reason with probability holds, he shall partake at once in their superiority and immortality. For just as the form assigned to the seed which falls upon the earth is given for many, the word which is called the seed is now secretly exerting itself within the same seed, but silently after the manner of a spark, confined within some dense body, and as this same seed, when it shall fall to the earth, and its dense clothing which encircles it from without shall dissolve through corruption, and then will it show itself to be lively, vigorous, put in motion the power that is vested within it, and take of the material which is beneath it, then too will it begin to act, and assume its lively and energetic nature, and its old dense clothing which is without it will also cast off, and put on the new which is greatly its superior. So also is the nature of the rational faculty, which is in man, circumstanced, that it is now bound up in a corruptible body, and of its own power acts but feebly, 
but should it be freed from the corruption which surrounds it and receive as a possession the locality which is in heaven and henceforth be sown and planted as it were in the society which is far beyond it and be fitted for the clothing of heaven and of the angels of what sort shall it be when it partake of the life that is pure and shall be freed from a participation in mortality it is neither becoming in me nor necessary for me to say for this will be obvious to all who can see from the example given. For the whole of the wheat seed is not subject to corruption. It is only the part that is without which perishes when it falls to the earth, while that concealed word and living power which is within it lives and remains. And the excellence which is of this is such that it will give forth vigorous corn ears of plants too. The same is the word, the invigorating cause, and so it is with every sort of seed. And so shall man alone be holy and in everything subject to corruption when released by death? And shall the clothing which is without at once together with that word which resides within him seed to corruption? And as to the knowledge which is incorporeal, that which partakes in all these powers, that which on account of its superiority is likened to God himself, Shall it not be considered even as one of those seeds which fall to the earth, or rather greatly their superior? For it is not the beard, nor yet the blade, but those mature and fat corn ears of his superiority which he shall give forth. Then, when he shall be taken away from the corruption which is of the earth, and shall have been delivered as from bonds, and shall not imprudently have bartered the conversation which is in heaven for that on the earth, and when he shall be at the side of God, then shall he, in truth, render as the angels do the fruits which are acceptable to God. Those, I say, the seed and power of which he possessed from ancient times in a mortal body, and contained, as it were, in an oven. All these things having been said for the purpose of showing that the essence which is in man is intelligent and rational, let us now proceed in our discourse to those consequent upon them. Had man, then, brought up as he is in the conversation that is on earth, but known his own greatness, and continued careful of the teaching which is of God, there could have no impediment happened to him, that when taken hence, he should not delight himself in a conversation like that of the angels, and take part in the life which is in the kingdom of his Father who is in heaven. But, because it is not one man, nor two, nor is the multitude small, on the contrary, it is the whole rational family on earth which has received the power to govern self, and because his nature, which has received the seed of the kingdom from the divine word, the king, is free, nevertheless, he has not well availed himself of his power, but has, by means of the subsidiary arts, labored in all vainglory, after those things which impel men to the bodily desires and are advantageous to life, has become skillful in agriculture, in the building of ships, in merchandise, and in the purchasing of possessions, nor this only, but he has also become great from every quarter, in the abundant increase of the wealth which puts forth no zeal against any kind of lust. All these things, however, which conduce to the salvation of the soul, and to that life of righteousness which is well-pleasing to God, all these, I say, has he annihilated in his mind from their very roots, has disregarded his own excellency, and of that race of his brethren who are in heaven, and has honored, through the freedom of his will, these abominable bodily lusts. More than this, his own greatness, of the righteousness of his Father who is in heaven, and of his praise, he has also been unmindful. These irrational itchings and delusions of childhood he has chosen. These from the fools of childhood usually do, who fly from the instruction and careful training of those who would enlarge their minds extravagantly to honor the things which are sweet for the present, but which corrupt at once both the body and soul, and to hunt out for themselves the error and foolish knowledge of that voluptuousness which is just too vain to be conceived. All mankind being then thus circumstanced, the increment of wickedness, that envious being, the hater of every good and deceiver as to the everything lovely in conjunction with the wicked demons, became their waylayer. This same in his wicked zeal prepared the nets and snares and riches, the abundant means of every sort of sin, against the salvation of all, and so drove them down from above into the depths of evil that none on earth could see. 
but transgress the law of their nature, and thus the germ of wickedness, instead of the seed of excellence, sprung up within them. And he that was more peaceful, more wise, and more rational than all that were on earth, so fell into the last stage of brutality and irrationality, that one of those beloved of God wept over this overthrow of their fall, and cried out, Man understood not his own hour, but was given up to thee as the brute, and became assimilated to it. On these accounts, therefore, a mighty Savior, greater than any son of man, was evidently needful to them, and such as he who anxiously undertook to provide for all the word of God. He who has, like a good and loving father, shown by deeds his providential care over the rational souls that are on the earth, and who hastened in the mission of himself to the call and for the healing of those who were thus fallen and perishing. The end of the first book of Asubius of Caesarea.